Roe vs. Wade is overturned, and Donald Trump credits God for it. What now, Mr. Weigel, and the merry band of Catholic never-Trumpers? Archbishop Bernard Hebda makes a public stand for the right to life of baby women everywhere. And Governor Ron DeSantis to make religious services essential, even during a pandemic. And this mother of six launches a powerful new app to undermine Planned Parenthood in public schools. Good news is busting out all over the place, tonight from the Remnant Underground. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Michael Matt, and this is the Remnant Underground. So much good news tonight that I'm um, not sure where to even begin. I'm seriously well, not I'm sure how to. The big, one. the big one, of course, Roe v. Wade. Everybody's talking about. We're going to get to that in a second. But so much good news, and it kind of goes into this whole thing that we've been saying down here for so long. You know, don't give up the fight because God's in charge, and ultimately these lunatics are going to lose. So. Lots of good news. Let's get right to it. The young uh, globalist leader loses big in France. We're going to talk about that in a moment. The Supreme Court just struck down another draconian attack on your Second Amendment rights. And Governor Ron DeSantis will sign a bill making religious services essential. And of course, as we just mentioned, Roe versus Wade is finally over. I don't even know. I Why is this? Is this a miracle? Why did it happen right now? Might know I think we might. I think it might have something to do with the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And we just did the, the Sharp Pilgrimage. The whole entire thing was dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, hope of nations. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks back home, and this happens. You can't possibly say the two are unrelated. At least I certainly can. And so it's it's a pretty it's a pretty great day. And that brings up a little reminder that we still are in the last few days of June here. In June, as everyone in this audience knows is a month dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In fact, Roe v. Wade was overturned on the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. It's just, an, it's, it's, so, it's, it's so great. Uh, so there's still time. I thought, what a good time to remind everybody. You can still become part, easily in fact, become part of the Remnants League of the Sacred Heart. You can get one of these uh, Sacred Heart lapel pins. You can get one of the flags with the Sacred Heart emblazoned on it, just like the Von Day flags, only it's a US flag. In fact, we'll let Katie tell you about how we can get, get in touch with, uh, with the store and maybe purchase some of these items. Hi, I'm Catherine Matt from RTV, and I wanted to remind you that we have an online store. RTV merchandise, t-shirts, we also have legs, hoodies, even the Sacred Heart lapel pin that Mr. Matt wears in every episode. We even have flags at shop.remnantnewspaper.com. That's shop at remnantnewspaper.com. Another quick reminder, friends, that the Catholic Identity Conference now is coming up in September in Pittsburgh. I'm going to be emceeing the three-day event, but man, after this big Roe v. Wade decision, I'm really excited to announce that Abby Johnson will be back at the CIC in person to speak, talk about some of this stuff, as will our friend and ally, brother-in-arms, the great John Henry Weston of LifeSite News is going to be at this one. Bishop Athanasius Schneider, providing they don't stop him at the border for some cockamamie reason. He will be with us in person. It's just, it's going to be a really, really great event. We're capping it at 700 participants this year, and it's first come, first serve. So if you're interested in coming, to come out to that uh, big, great big Catholic rendezvous where the, where the clans literally come together tonight, uh, check the, the link below and, and sign up today. So let's get to all this um, unbelievably good news. I mentioned Macron in France, President Macron. He made history last week. He didn't really make news too much, but he made history, didn't he? When, mm -hmm. when he became the first president in decades to fail to win an absolute majority in the French parliament, falling short in a stunning defeat at the polls just two weeks after that narrow re-election victory that he had. So now Macron's in trouble. You know, his cabinet will be shuffled. Three of his ministers failed to be elected. And the bottom line is this, friends. Our buddy Klaus, you know, Klaus Schwab, his young globalist leaders, they're facing the cold, hard reality. And we predicted this. We prayed for their openness that people are going to start realizing it ain't all that to be part of the Great Reset. So these young globalist leaders, now they're facing serious political blowback over this stupid Great Reset thing. It's becoming a political liability. And we just saw that play out in France. And we'll be watching that story. 
Now, what I always have to remind, I'm not saying that the Great Reset is over, the New World Order has been scrapped. I'm not saying that. I am not saying that. It's not over. But that it's faltering and that people are waking up and that we need to jump on this moment now, this window of opportunity where clearly they've been exposed, where clearly they're stumbling, where clearly the thing is failing to take flight. Yeah, yes, friends, we need to jump on this. You know, I, I get it. They're powerful. We've been two years we've been talking about how much power they have, how much money they have, how much corporate influence they have, even over governments. I understand that. But they're human. God's in charge, and much more powerful forces are, are now coming together to stand against them. So, yeah, they're powerful, but so what? I don't care. We need to force the issue now that we see weakness, now that we see people getting tired of them. <laughs> We become, we become kind of our own sharks, you know, who taste the blood in the water and we want more. We've got to push this thing. Go after them. Keep moving against them. Don't back down. It really seriously accomplishes absolutely nothing for us to say in a moment like this, well, now don't be fooled. They got us just where they want us and these guys are demons. They can never be stopped. What in the world does that accomplish? Why would we do that? Why would we say that? Are you really sure they can't be beat? Since when? Where did this guy Klaus Schwab, where did he come from? You know, who cares about this guy? So last night, he's lunatics. Why are we giving him such power that he's absolutely going to win his game to transhumanize us all, to wreck the world? Lots of people are gonna wake up. That's what we're gonna talk about tonight. The good news, the awakening, the godly comeback, if you will. I'm not so sure these guys can't be beat. To me, the Great Reset lunatics are starting to look, well, pretty darn silly all of a sudden. And somewhere along the line, I'm sure many of you have noticed this, guys like Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates with the arms and all this, and Joe Biden tipping over on his bicycle, can't speak, they become memes, friends. It's like the Tower of Babel thing, they become confused. <laughs> They're ridiculous. And their New World Order project, consequently, is failing to impress lots of people. It's failing to pull it off. Even on issues where just a little, little while ago, maybe, we, maybe they seem pretty unstoppable. You know, issues that they were going to win, we thought. You know, like mandatory vaccine mandates, like the health passes. We just came back, as we talked about last show, we just came back from the EU Nobody was vaccinated. Nobody had digital pass requirements. Nobody had green pass requirements. It was nothing. It was normal. No masks. Nothing. <laughs> and again, as we said last time, we saw that coming. It's because they're not pulling it off. I don't care what plan B is. I don't care what they're going to pull out in the fall. This thing is falling apart. The wheels are coming off this thing. And, it, and as that happens, you have serious statesmen rising to the occasion right now. Guys like Ron DeSantis, <laughs> he's going to make it now so that they can't shut, get this. This is such, again, such unexpected but wonderful news. Remember when they shut our churches down last time? It was a big part of the problem, the spiritual cutoff from grace, the sacraments, mass, last rites for the old folks in nursing homes, right? Well, DeSantis looks like it's not going to happen here, not on my watch. So he's going to make enact legislation now that's going to say that churches, religious services, cannot be shut down and they are urgent. They can't be considered non-essential during emergencies, even if there's a rogue virus floating around. This goes back to what we, we did a show with this on the time, that, that great moment where Trump, who could have been stronger, I get all that, but where he came out before Easter and he said, we need to open the churches. And if you don't open the churches, we are going to. And I think yeah. he said something like, oh, what America needs is more prayer, not yeah. less, you know? That was the effort. And you see DeSantis kind of finishing that job down in Florida. This is gonna become contagious. And let's just see what happens in the fall if they roll out some other variant and try to shut down the churches, you know? But again, even Ron DeSantis now doing the job of what some of our hierarchs should be doing, especially in the Vatican, making sure that this does not happen again. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what all of us need to do. Make sure, do whatever you possibly can to frustrate these plans, whatever they are. Don't tell them, your neighbor, the mailman, or anybody else that they can't be stopped because they can be. Gun control. Did a show on gun control a few weeks ago. Even gun control now is slipping out of their cold, dead fingers, if you'll forgive the pun. 
Today, the high court struck down part of a New York law that requires those applying for a concealed carry permit to show a special reason for needing it. And remember what this is all about. We, we talked about this the last time. I argued that, you know, the Biden, which includes the UN, and Davos, and China, even talking about taking guns away, just like Adolf Hitler did before he shut down his country. Uh, we talked about the fact that this is a push, that the push to take away the guns is much more than taking away your hunting rights or even your self-defense rights. It's a psyop. It's a, it's a way to sort of emasculate people into thinking, I can't even protect myself. The government has to take care of me because I can't do anything to take care of myself. This is brainwashing, as we, as we talked about just a couple of weeks ago. And again, when we're talking about the weakness of these young, globalist leaders, it, after we did that show, the little ferret up in Canada he didn't waste any time. He came right out and confirmed exactly what we were saying down here in the underground just two days later. Here's the ferret. Guns can be used for hunting or for sport shooting in Canada, and there are lots of gun owners, and they're mostly law-respecting and, and, and law-abiding. But you can't use a gun for self-protection in Canada. That's not a right that you have in the Constitution or anywhere else. If you and again, to augment our point that it's not just traditional Catholics or Christians that, that are seen, lots of people are seeing it all across the political spectrum. Thoughts and prayers and calls for more gun control isn't enough. How about letting me defend myself from evil? I, you don't think that I'm capable and trustworthy to handle a firearm. You don't think that the Second Amendment doesn't apply to people that look like me? Who and you who would call for more gun controls are the same ones that are calling to defund the police? Who is supposed to protect us? And what's really fun, when you start seeing so many people, we've talked a lot about Bill Maher and Joe Rogan or you know, Musk, these guys, waking up and they're not even close to being actually in our camp, but they're waking up over there on the left. What's really fun about all this is they're all starting to talk about the Soros agenda, the George Soros agenda. And I'm just old enough to remember when that was a crazy red trad conspiracy theory, bunch of garbage, that's just a bunch of nonsense. I remember that when that's when it, what it was, how it was dismissed. It's just a conspiracy theory to rattle on about the George Soros effect. Well, it's no longer, as we said last time, a conspiracy theory. The conspiracy is simply being exposed, even by mainstream political figures. Here's Newt Gingrich. The criminals, as you just saw in, the, in your report from Los Angeles, criminals aren't on the street by accident. You know, criminals are on the street because George Soros has been spending money to elect very left-wing district attorneys who refuse to lock up dangerous people. So they're seeing through it. Everybody's seeing through it, not just you. You're not alone. And then they have this ridiculous caricature of, of authority and power in our country, the leader of the free world, so, so, so called, making gaffe after gaffe after gaffe. And we, we explained why this was. It was to show that Americans could survive without the executive branch, without the president. But it's backfiring. The whole world, even the Democrats are moving away from this clown. Here's Biden <laughs> trying to put on display how physically fit he is. Poor guy, you know? What's he doing? Even, even if he doesn't fall over on his bicycle, don't his handlers realize that everybody sees through the shtick? He's so mentally feeble now that they say, let's put one of those, let's put his head in a bucket, stick him on a bicycle, send him out in front of cameras so that people will think he's healthy. Everybody's thinking that. Everybody knows. They see right through it. Oh, it's not like somebody just happened to catch him with a camcorder. <laughs> It's not like it happened by accident. They set this up to try to show us that the leader of the free world is not as physically handicapped as he is mentally. Well, now he just blew that. That's, again, it seems to me the Tower of Babel reference works. They're just falling all over themselves, quite literally, uh, as they try to pull this thing off, which just isn't happening. And now we come to Roe versus Wade. How in the world do you look at this and not see the hand of God in it? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's impossible. In the middle of the Biden administration, this finally happens? You know, who saw this coming? We all prayed. 
We hoped it was coming, but did you honestly think? And some people are like, oh man, don't fall for it. You know, it's still states' rights are gonna say they should be condemning abortion. What would you rather have had happen? That they didn't overturn Roe v. Wade? Would you have been happy with that? Friends, let yourself celebrate this. Does it go far enough? Maybe not, but it's incredible. It's awesome. They overturned Roe v. Wade. Somebody my age waited his whole life to see if this miracle could ever happen. And it just happened, and it's just a starting point. It's not the end of the war. Several states already, including South Dakota, Missouri, have already banned abortions after Friday's landmark decision. And more are on the way. So those of you who are saying, don't be fooled by this, how many babies' lives were saved in just Missouri and South Dakota over the past 24 hours? You see? Be fooled by it? Be fooled by what? <laughs> this is a monumental thing that has happened for so many reasons, friends. This overturning of Roe v. Wade shows that our nation, thank God, is not quite beyond hope, friends. That we still have a soul somewhere buried deep inside. That our nation maybe still even has a conscience. That folks are still talking about this 50 years later. There's still somebody, half the country, still trying to, fought to defend the most innocent among us. This stands us, at least half the country, I would think, in pretty good stead with the big guy upstairs. That somebody here is fighting still. Do you think there's anyone in Europe, anyone in Europe fighting for the baby? I'm talking politicians. Seriously fighting to defend the babies, the unborn in Europe? Do you realize what a gift this is to us as Americans to live in a country where this conversation still happens? Don't you understand? It's a gift from God. And who knows where it's going to go? Because the great Justice Clarence Thomas, God bless him, is arguing right now that the Supreme Court should now revisit other what he calls substitute due process cases, specifically the one which declared the right to same-sex marriage. Could this be the beginning of a slippery slope? After Biden buries the Democratic Party, which he's now he came, he came out to bury the country, seems he's more likely to bury his own party. After that happens, and you get somebody who's actually pro-life, pro-God, pro-family back in the White House, lots of people are praying for this, friends. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's going to happen. Who knows? Who knows where it goes from here, but it's a chance. It's an opportunity. It's a moment of hope. <laughs> And it's no wonder that the woke corporate mob are out there going into apoplexy over this. Bellwether corporations from the worlds of finance, media, technology and healthcare said they would bankroll travel for workers who need access to safe, legal abortions and other procedures. JP Morgan Chase and Company, the largest bank in the US, will pay for its employees to travel to another state if needed to obtain a legal abortion. The owner of Facebook and Instagram will reimburse travel expenses, to the extent permitted by law, for employees who will need them to access out of state health care and reproductive services. Walt Disney Company, which has been mired in disputes with conservative leaders over its support for LGBTQ people, said it will cover the cost of travel for employees who can't access the care they need in their state. Healthcare companies CVS Health Corporation and Biogen Incorporated also said that they are making out-of-state medical care including abortion accessible for their employees, including Microsoft Corporation, which reiterated similar plans after the court's ruling Friday, that have said in recent weeks they would grant such coverage to workers. I realize I'm a man. You're a woman. Maybe you can help me with this. What is wrong with these people? These massive people with the pink hair, the tats, and, and, and all of this. They're so woke. They're so progressive. They're so enlightened, right? right? So my question is, leaving morality completely aside for just a moment, <laughs> are the morons who work for Disney, Facebook, <laughs> are, they, are they seriously too stupid? to find out how to prevent pregnancy in 2022? Really? They don't know where contraception is? They can't figure out how to buy it? 
Again, I'm leaving morality aside for a second. In the year 2022, all these people working for, for these woke companies like Meta and Disney, well, they're still out there getting knocked up, if you'll forgive the expression, and then they want us to pay for their abortions? What are these people, 15 years old? What are we talking about here? Again, this is 2022. What are we talking about? Are they suffering from some sort of mental handicap as well? I mean, seriously, ladies, I don't mean to sound insensitive, but move on. Stop sleeping around. Stop getting pregnant. Stop aborting babies. In other words, find a hobby. Get a life like the rest of us have had to do. Why should I pay for your abortion? Could you please break that down for me? And besides that, another thing you might want to do when you pick up your hobby is get over yourselves and get over Donald Trump. You're still, you're still out there screaming like that moron screaming when Trump got elected. I think she's literally still screaming or that ilk. They're still out there Aah! screaming over Trump. Man, he lost, right? You guys are all talking about how he lost you know, a long time ago now. It's over, right? But you keep bringing up Trump. It's all Trump's fault. That's weird. That's like a pathology. That's an obsession with the guy. Why? Are you a bunch of demons? Just the fact that this guy, this Manhattan businessman, mentions something about defending babies, you're going to freak out like the thing in The Exorcist, you know, the projectile vomiting, the head spinning around because... Because Trump thought maybe it was an idea not to kill so many babies. What the hell is wrong with you people? You know, and, and, and the leader of the free world, he's out there uh, <laughs> blaming Trump for the whole thing as well. And, and I actually, to take a look at this clip, I kind of agree with Biden on this one. It was three justices named by one president, Donald Trump, who were the core of today's decision to upend the scales of justice and eliminate a fundamental right for women in this country. <laughs> That's right, Joey. Just keep talking. Keep running that mouth because you're absolutely right. Donald Trump, after a lot of people were looking for somebody to speak up for the unborn, to speak up for patriot America, for God-fearing America, Donald Trump did that. And if you forgot how much he mattered, just remember how you felt when you heard this. For 47 years, Americans of all backgrounds have traveled from across the country to stand for life. And today, as President of the United States, I am truly proud to stand with you. And the really great thing is, I just saw this before we started the show tonight, when Donald Trump was asked by somebody at Fox News, you know, um, how he feels having appointed, you know, three of these, these, these justices, pro-life justices who overturned Roe, and they were asked, what do you think about that? He tells Fox, here's Trump, he says, God made the decision. Again, who's talking about God in politics anymore at all? Let alone Trump saying, yeah, you know what? This is a God thing, which exactly is what I, I agree. It's what it is. And somehow I wonder when I hear this Manhattan businessman who's not exactly a daily communicant or a champion of the kingship of Christ. But when I see that and I hear him say something like that, and I realize that he came through on his promises to do the best he could for the unborn and for patriotic and God-fearing America, it occurs to me to wonder how the folks who are supposedly on our side of the aisle, how they feel right now. I don't mean to pick on a guy, but I'm thinking about maybe Mr. George Weigel and his fellow neo-Catholic luminaries. I wonder how they're feeling this morning. More than three dozen leading Catholic scholars in an open letter urge fellow Catholics not to back Donald Trump. Joining us, co-author of the letter, George Weigel and Mary Rice Hassan, who signed on to it. I think we caught you by surprise, George. Good to see you. <laughs> Always a Both surprise at EWTN. Yeah, why write this letter now? Why not let the democratic process take its course? This is part of the democratic process, of which a crucial moment is next Tuesday with the winner-take-all Ohio and Florida uh, primaries. And frankly, uh, my colleagues and I thought it was time uh, for us to say to fellow Catholics, do not be fooled. This man does not share our core concerns. There's nothing in his record, his character, or his campaign to suggest uh, that he does. And there are alternatives, way, uh, there are alternative ways to express your disagreement. Now, I don't mean to pick on George. I had a few exchanges with George. Probably he means well. I don't know. He's a neo-Catholic. He's a neo-con. But I, again, in the interest of making sure this does not happen again, friends, that history does not repeat itself, 
let's maybe not take this these these guys too terribly seriously in the future if they're going to do things like that. You know, if they're going to say things like that. Now, I'm not going to get negative. I am feeling way too positive to linger too too long on that particular point. This is a great day. And there's so much more work to do, but we got to stop and celebrate what just happened. And 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 now we not especially now that we know exactly where it went. We always did, but lots of people didn't. They didn't know in 1973 where this was all going to lead because it was all about a woman's right to choose and women's rights. And now we're to the point where they don't even know what a woman is anymore, you know. But it went from from a woman's right to choose to infanticide in America to partial birth abortion in America, to murder of born alive babies in America. And I'll bet a lot of you who were kind of talking about a woman's right to choose and all of that back in the day are reconsidering now when you see what this has turned into. Literally the butchering of babies, even born babies. <laughs> no country can survive if that continues. And you again, don't have to be a daily communicant to realize that, holy cow, this is scary. They're slaughtering live children now. A satanic human, a, a machine of human sacrifice of millions and millions of babies whose blood now watered this tree, this horrific tree that we've all seen growing up in our society, you know, a tree of total license to break God's law at every level, which is why Clarence Thomas now is talking about looking into the gay marriage ruling and all of that, because we, ha we have to look there because this is war on Almighty God. And out of that war came social chaos that we've been talking about for a long time. So let's look at this great moment as a chance to start over. Let's pray that the Catholic Church finally stops talking so gentle about things and starts getting serious about even something like abortion. Abortion is a mortal sin. Abortion is a mortal offense against the law of God. And the Catholic Church has to get back to that language too. She has to stir herself into action. She has to learn to lead again. And there actually is some reason to hope today, tonight, down here in the underground on that score too. As I've told you so many times, I've not given up on all the bishops. I think the ones who have kept, and kept the faith, at least to some degree, are going to be moving in the right direction now as you see the face of evil rise up in our society and in politics. We need to anticipate that, pray for that, and be ready to open up and be receptive to that when it happens with bishops. Because we've all grown a little impatient, haven't we? I certainly have. But here in the Archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis, for example, our Archbishop Bernard Hebda, many of you may remember him for the courageous decision that he took to defy the Minnesota governor's lockdown of our churches back in, during, during when COVID was at its height. Archbishop Hebda wasted no time this week in taking to the streets of St. Paul on the very day that Roe was overturned to praise the decision and to publicly stand for life. Brothers and sisters, I would not have missed this event because I wanted to see the faces of those who have been praying for all of these years for the reversal of Roe versus Wade. It is truly the Lord's victory, but thank you so deeply for your prayers. And this is what we've been asking for, friends, begging our bishops to show leadership on every level, but also, of course, in the level of life, a very important fundamental level, defend life publicly. And as a member of the Latin Mass community here in St. Paul, I was proud to offer His Excellency my thanks for his words and for his encouragement, and yes, for his leadership, especially now since Archbishop Hebda has been so pastoral with us, with the folks in the Latin Mass community here in his archdiocese. You know, in our new Remnant TV documentary, Guardians of Tradition, which is due to premiere when? July? Yeah. July. It's going to be a big deal. World premiere. Very big. In the aftermath of the Second Vatican Council, the Catholic Church fell into hard times. There was a crisis in vocations with tens of thousands. We present a short interview with the Bishop of Chartres, uh, another man who, like Archbishop Hebda, is not a traditionalist, but is really being fair-minded for those uh, to those who are. Here's here's just a bit of that, that that documentary, Guardian of Tradition. My name is Philippe Christori. I'm the Bishop of Chartres, and. Um, I think the pilgrimage is a walk as the 
life as a Christian is a walk. So I'm very happy to come and to walk for a few kilometers with uh, the groups, the chapters, and to welcome them in my cathedral, especially tomorrow for the Holy Mass. I was really surprised. Walter, you got that, uh, you got that footage of the Archbishop of Chart. What was he like in person? Good guy? Seemed like a good guy. Yeah, really. Because he's not a traditionalist. That's the thing. You know, that's what we're trying to do is like just looking for fair treatment from the, from the shepherds. We're not, you know, nothing more than that. It should be a fairly easy thing to do. And we're seeing more and more of that going on now in the light of uh, Crudationus Custodis, where bishops are kind of going, what, what's the problem here again? Why am I cracking down on traditionalists? They got these huge communities. What's, what's it? We certainly saw that in Chart. We're seeing that, I think, with Archbishop Hebden. It's great. You know, I think, and I think that's that's what we should be count, we, we should count on and, and pray for and push for. There's every reason, in other words, in the world right now, in the church and culture and the state, to not lose hope, to know and be confident that God wins in the end. And we fight now for that ultimate victory every day with everything we do. And I repeat myself, defeatism gets us nowhere. It's just impossible. We just got to give up. I just hate that. It drives it drives me nuts. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time, exactly. And I'm going to close on that, in fact. I'm a homeschool dad. Some of you might know that. My wife and I have educated all seven of our children at home. We still have a couple little ones. Michael's 10 years old, I think. But we educate all of our kids right through high school and then sent them off to college ready and fully armed for life in one of those Catholic, what I call the, the Catholic ID League schools. Not Ivy League, but ID, identity, the Catholic identity uh, league uh, schools, Christendom, Franciscan, Ave Maria, TAC, whatever. So sometimes we're tempted then as homeschool parents to say, you know what, to hell with, with everything else. I'm not even going to think about it. It's too much. The public schools are rotten to the core. And well, guess what? They are. But what about all those millions of kids, of children who are imprisoned in those schools that are rotten to the, to the core in that system? Does anyone care about them anymore? Is anybody fighting for them anymore? You know, and my next guest now has been fighting for them for a long time. Teresa Barbal is the executive director of Life Network of Southwest Florida, a Catholic activist whom I met while giving a talk down in Naples, Florida recently at the Legatus Group and was really impressed with her, some of her ideas for how to fight back. So earlier this week, I sat down with Teresa uh, to discuss her efforts to, to do something pretty unique, you know, something that I, I, I never even thought of, like you, use technology, bone up on our technology skills and fight, fight back against theirs. So she's doing that. We're going to give her a chance here to explain what she's doing to stop the, the grooming of kids in schools and, and to use. They're actually using AI to recruit these kids and to make them into future clients, if you will, of Planned Parenthood. So here's my conversation with Teresa. So you're down in Naples. It's warm. You're expecting a child, I understand, yourself at this point. Is that correct? Yes, I am. I'm expecting baby number six. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations. So I'm going to go right, right mm -hmm. ahead and admit my ignorance exactly uh, about what you, what your team is doing with respect to this app. So if you would, if you'd be so kind, just kind of tell our viewers what, what the app's all about and, and what the expectations are there. So I work with youth in schools for the most part. And also what I've seen is that Planned Parenthood has a Rue chatbot system that they use inside of schools that answers kids' questions for mental and emotional support. So they call it social emotional learning, SEL. There's a lot of other names, but it's actually not even called sex ed. It's actually called social emotional learning because they want to include the gender identity stuff with it as well. So they don't want it to just be sex ed. They want it to be gender euphoria, confusion, propaganda. And the kids go on to this chat system, which Planned Parenthood boasted in 2019 of having 2.2 million users. So this is not small potatoes. This is big time. And out of that, they got 460,000 clinic appointments. So the amount of death that this is bringing is unreal. So when we were seeing it come into our community, I wanted to have a competitor. I wanted to be able to go to our schools and say, you know, look, here's a better social emotional tool. I found it and there were none. <laughs> I, I did not go out there saying, you know, I'm a mom of going to be six now. I want to build a mental emotional support app. <laughs> it was not like on my radar. But then when I saw, I was like, this is just destroying kids. They're thinking they're homosexual. These, the Roo system, it's R-O-O. -O. If you look at it yourself, and I, I strongly urge you to look at it as an adult. So you go in there and it suggests questions. So this is an automated system. 
So you can put in, you know, your identity, you can put in who you are, and it's going to suggest questions. It's going to suggest, you know, maybe you're homosexual and you should try having sex with the same gender or, and, and it comes up with these, these reasons why you're having your social emotional issues. You never talk to a person until you're transferred to a clinic representative. This is also a tool for chemical abortion. So you could go on and be transferred to an appointment and then therefore get abortion pills mailed to your house or pick up through a drive through window. So just absolutely diabolical, confusing, and schools are instituting this as education. They're saying, you know, kids need to spend an hour or two a week on this and making it a first source for answering questions. So that was what really bothered me was instead of telling kids, you know, you should talk to a real person, we're going to talk to a computer that's going to suggest that you become our client and suggest you, you know, take gender drugs, you know, because they're making lots of money off all this. So this is all big, huge tech tons of money, millions, if not billions of dollars. And we are building a competitor. We're building an app that actually uses real people, not not robots, and gives kids sound advice. And we have built out our training modules. We have real people set up and we can also turn off the real people if they and you know don't um, follow our code of conduct. So if we get anybody who's trying to undermine our mission to provide really good emotional support and to move kids away from this abortion industry tool, then we have the tools to do that. And it has been quite an uphill battle um, working in (laughs) discovering what tech is like and how I would say completely corrupt the whole industry is. I mean, we're, we're looking at if we go into different areas getting turned off. Like we have to always think about, oh, at any point they'll turn us off. So we have to find third sources. We have to do everything locally, which has been exceptionally expensive. So instead of being able to outsource like your typical fast food place would do, they'd build an app, they'd send it to India and somebody would do it for a hundred thousand dollars. We do everything in the U S to make sure there's no back doors where Planned Parenthood or the government is going to spy on us. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. It's it's as if the culture of death. I mean, the, the the children that were fortunate enough to get past the abortion doctors are now receiving all the brunt brute force of big tech to recruit them and to groom them into this lifestyle. It's, it's just incredible to think that that's happening in schools where children are supposed to be protected and safe. Unbelievable. Well, in our community, they want to make it mandatory for two months every day that kids in sixth grade have to go into this Rue chat bot and sit in a room all together and look at it I'm and good. set up their profiles. And, and I sit there and I talk to teachers. I talk to real teachers who just say, this is the worst thing. You know, I've taught 20 years. I've seen some bad stuff, but this is sincerely makes them sick. And in Florida, we have debated that it could be illegal because I'm like, a lot of this SEL stuff in CRT, DeSantis has made illegal, but they bypass a lot of the laws because it's online questions and they can't really record it and you don't really know what's going to happen. And it's personal to the child. And because it's personal, there's no record. They don't have to have parental permission to do this. So no parents involved. You can say however old you want to be. Mm-hmm. So you can say, you know, I'm 20, but you're really not. You're really 10. And the other thing is um, it wants kids to think about deforming sex. They don't want sex to be something in between a man and a woman or married couples. They want it to be something that is just a regular pleasure and for use and come back to us if you get pregnant. And that's it. They, they want to demean all of that. And they have to get younger and younger and younger in order to do that. It's just, it's just unbelievable. But it's really, I, I, I mean, it's so important because people think of, you know, good people, pro-lifers, maybe starting a blog or a YouTube channel or something and talking and talking and talking about this stuff. But this kind of thing that you're discussing, this is already at the heart and bosom of the schools. So it's something I think probably not a lot of people are paying attention to. Parents, I'm sure, are. But to have, to, for you to be sort of trying to integrate, to kind of go in there and set up competition. Do you anticipate problems with big tech trying to block your efforts? in terms of just getting the word out about what you're doing? Um, we have had issues 
already. We've had um, just being aware that we're not going to pick a server company. Like we know Amazon or Google Cloud would shut us down. Like we know that. Sure. So going in ahead of time and saying, you know, here, here was where we are. We are in the Apple and Android app stores and they fully approved us. And we cannot use any servers that are attached to that because that would definitely undermine us. Either we get turned off or we in fact would end up, um, you know, them limiting our content or our users. Mm -hmm. Well, Teresa, you obviously have my full endorsement as far as supporting what you're doing. And I, I don't even know exactly how I can help, how we can help here at Remnant TV, but obviously we're at your disposal. How can our viewers sort of get in touch with you and, and, and sort of look into what you're doing and start supporting you? We have a website, mymentorprogram.org, and there is our email. You can contact us, you can donate to us, you can get a link to download our app. Our app is easy to find. It's My Mentor Program in the Apple or Android App Store, and that will keep you up to date with everything we're doing as we launch all of our content. And being aware that if this is in your kid's school or your grandkid's school or your neighbor kid's school, getting the information so that teachers can trade it out with our app in place of the Planned Parenthood garbage. That's fantastic. Well, I really, really appreciate you coming on our show and sharing this, uh, this information with our viewers. I hope you'll come back, maybe give us an update in a month or so, a couple months or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and let us know how it's going and see if we can you know, help, help more to get things uh, going even faster. This is vital, vitally important work. I really want to congratulate you on doing this. This is an amazing thing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. God bless, you. God bless you. Absolutely. Thank you. God bless you. And congratulations on that baby. God bless you for that too. Oh, thank you. All right. All right. All right. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Mymentorprogram.org. If you want to make a connection with her and, and sort of do what you can to support her to use her services. Let's spread the word about that. And again, let's fight back. You know, that's, that's it for us tonight. Lots of good news. Thanks for being here with us, having this conversation. And don't forget to share this video because as we say all the time, YouTube in this day and age, sure as heck is not going to share. We need you to do that. So please share the video, spread the word. I'm Michael Matt from Renda TV. Keep the faith and we'll see you next week.